Well, I figure no time like the present to tell you what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do. I have my <clears throat> 99 F350 that y'all know about with 7.3 liter diesel in it. And um, apparently it's a common problem to have the fuel intake foot that's in your fuel tank develop a leak. And either it's your bypass valve or the standpipe cracks, who really knows, but uh, it, it develops a leak to where your, your uh, fuel, you'll start sucking air before the tank's ever actually uh, empty. Now mine's doing it at about a quarter tank. So, you know, I'm driving along, good to go, got a quarter tank of fuel, and the sucker starts acting like it's running out of fuel. And I was, you know, all sorts of confused, couldn't figure it out. I managed, luckily, I managed to dump off into a gas station with the thing just, you know, slobbering and sputtering and barely running. And got it full of diesel. And then, you know, had to get it actually restarted and got it primed up, got lucky, and had to sit there at the station, you know, just sitting there feathering the throttle and working for about five minutes to, to kind of get it cleaned up enough to where it had enough power and enough air out of lines to pull itself. Hobbled on home. Since then, I've only been able to, you know, every time it gets down close to a quarter tank, I gotta stop and fill up. So it's a manageable disease, so to speak. You can not worry about it, but it drives me nuts to have to stop that often. You know, that extra 100 miles, it's not huge, but it's worth it. So anyway, you gotta drop the fuel tank or take the bed off to fix it. I'm gonna try dropping the tank. So I ran her down to a quarter tank today and I'm now siphoning out what's left. Yes, I am, in fact, just siphoning because I'm a redneck. Um, oh, and there you go, siphon cut off. So hopefully, and based off the weight of my buckets here, I've got about 10 or 11 gallons, which should be all that's in the tank when it's at this level. Um, so now with it siphoned out, I've already got my skid plate off. I'm gonna jump under there and uh, release my tank straps and see if I can't lower the thing down without smashing myself. All right, so we've made a little progress here. Um, I've actually got the tank kind of down, but not all the way down. I just loosened the two bolt straps that go to the upper side of your frame, and that actually let the tank strap drop down here on my drive shaft and hung it off perfect, where then the tank just relaxed and lays right inside the tank strap, so it's not actually on the ground. Um, and now I've been working on getting the fuel lines off. Of course, my Chilton manual shows four different types of fuel line quick connects, except for mine. Uh, but it wasn't bad. It's got these little locking clips, which you just, when they're in the lock position, they're slid up like that. So you pull them down and then this just hooks over the fitting. Uh, but then inside the fitting, you see those four little, the, these four little uh, metal tabs pop out and they lock over this neck right here. So that's how it locks on there. So you gotta get a flatted, obviously they make a fuel line release tool that would have been real handy, but I don't have one. Um, so I just used a flathead screwdriver and just was able to work around the edge, pop all four of them down. The second one was a pain in the butt. The first one popped off pretty easy. The second one was a pain. And now I'm loosening up this um, lock ring, which it looks like it's just one big lock ring. I tried to turn it by hand and I can't quite get it, but I used a little block of wood on this tab and tapped it with a hammer and I've got it rotating. So I'm gonna keep working that, get it rotated off. And then once I get the lock ring loose, should be able to just pull this whole sending unit out and that little foot will be on the bottom of it. Okay, so here's our new piece that's got to go on. Um, this is actually Ford uh, OEM replacement part. I got it from Riff Raff Diesel though. I don't know what Ford would have charged me for Riff Raff. It was about 40 bucks, I think. Um, but anyway, this is this sits flat on the bottom of your tank. This is your main uptake, but it also has this little bypass valve mounted in the side of it that I guess is supposed to supposed to let it not take fuel off the bottom of the tank until it has to so once it gets down past that level it it stops and that closes and it lets it start picking up from the bottom I guess but anyway here's the new one and um, yeah this was needed because here's the old one <laughs> so so I got my sending unit out and you can see I got it just laid up here on top of the exhaust and the uh, drive shaft which you know what I'm thankful that the redneck that had this before me cut the exhaust off short because I can sit right in here and work um, but obviously your little float for your fuel gauge, make sure you don't bend that rod, be very careful. But anyway, on the end, let me see right over here. Oh, yeah, right there you can see where the plastic is. is actually broken off. If I can get it stopped right there. Oh, hold on, let me get my light on it. Y'all hate me for this, I know. Um, Jesus, it's making me angry. Okay, right there. 
that piece of black plastic's busted off. So that's where that new riser goes. So basically my fuel tank was just sucking from there, which is about yeah, three or four inches off the bottom of the tank. So yeah, I'm running out of diesel when I still got a quarter tank because it's not pulling off the bottom. So let me get that black piece off there and slide the new one on. I'll show you before I put it together. Okay, so there you go with the new one put on. I'm not sure if it's supposed to orient one way or another. Um, I don't think it really matters. And I don't know because when I pulled the old one out, it was busted to bits. But that plastic was all just real brittle. Just, I guess, just dry rotted from years of exposure to diesel fuel. Um, cause it just cracked and I went to grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it off there and it just shattered like glass. It just fell apart. Uh, but the new one just slides right on. It's a nice little snug fit. And you see this actually, um, this is flexible. So this is, um, see it moving there when I push on it. It's actually got a rubber body to it. It's flexible, which is good since it sits right on the bottom of your tank. It needs to be able to flex if you're hitting bumps and stuff. It's just kind of moving around slightly. But again, yeah, I guess just over time it just gets brittle and, and bust because, yeah, there's mine. So, new piece on, going to get her stuck back together, slid back together, and have this puppy all bolted up and hopefully running in about 30 minutes. Okay, so there's that put back together. And again, sorry for the lighting, but, you know, it's not that bright underneath the truck. Um, got everything stuck back together just fine. It just slides back in. There, focus, finally. It just slides back in. This plastic ring was a son of a gun. Um, you know, I was playing to y'all how I had to hammer it off with a little block of wood. I had to hammer it back on. It just has got big, fat, thick plastic threads, and I just could not get them to, to catch and then turn easy. And maybe that's by design that they don't want it to turn easy. Um, but I actually had to kind of get it started on. Felt like it was cross-threaded. Um, and then went around and tapped the edge with a hammer to finally get the tap down on it to get the threads to kind of pop in and line up. And then was able to use my block of wood again to, to turn it and, and drive it all the way around. But I've got it driven down nice and tight now. See, my sending unit's not moving at all. It's locked in place. Got my fuel lines hooked back up. Little quick connects. Of course, never did have to even disconnect the electrical unit, so hopefully I didn't damage any of that. Um, and now we're just going to rotate the tank back up into position, hook the straps back up, and put all my skid plate and everything back on, put diesel back in it, and we're done. Holy moly. Okay. We got it all slapped back together, um, and that was not easy. Those freaking tank straps, they designed them such that they're kind of, you know, uh, got a little bit of spring tension on them almost, so that when, when they're tight, it keeps that tank from wiggling. So it makes sense, um, probably if the truck had been up on a hoist where I could get a little bit better leverage on it and, you know, had someone else to help, it would have been easier. Uh, but that was a son of a gun to get those uh, lined up, to, to get the tank level in the in the strap and then bolt it up but also uh, on the front one what I did oh, let me see if I can show you here on the front one no I guess it's not gonna light up doggone it my headlamps on the other side anyway I, there there's a so on the front one you've got that bolt right there on the outer end of your strap I loosened that I actually took it all the way out and that let me get the inside part of the strap up first and I was able to get a little bit better angle um, on the outside to get it in place. The back one I was able to get up on its own. But that and then the um, the skid plate was kind of the same way. It's not really spring tension. It's just a pain because it's a big awkward kind of piece. But got it all done up tight. And uh, of course my, my connections underneath there for my actual fill neck and the vent. Got both those hooked back up. So everything's bolted back up, buttoned up tight. No spare parts, no bolts, no nuts. So that's always a good way to finish the job. So now, I'm going to get my diesel back in it and see if we can't get her started. Well, there you go. I'm not sure. I just started it and uh, revved it up for about 30 seconds, kept my foot on the throttle. I don't really know how long it'll take. You know, if it's, it, it may have a little air pocket of diesel between the, the pump on the rail and the tank, but that's a real short section of fuel hose. So that may not even manifest. That may work itself out in the field filter. So I'm not sure. It might start slobbering here in a second if it sucks air out of the fuel filter, but for right now, started running smooth, which I'm still not down to that quarter tank level um, because I put in two gallons of fuel on the way home, so I was a little bit over a quarter tank. But knowing that I put a riser pipe on where there didn't used to be one, I'm pretty confident that I fixed the issue. 